welcome back to Dark Corner Streaming. Continuing our dive into the films of Peter Cushing, we're looking at Hammer's The Gorgon, which you can find on Daily Motion. Featuring Cushing... It isn't a pretty sight. ...alongside Christopher Lee... Well, you propose to keep me standing out here all night? Professor Meister! ...and directed by the great Terence Fisher, The Gorgon could be seen as just another hammer. Certainly the sets are familiar. Barbara Shelley is the heroine. Their heads were crowned with living snakes, and each snake was a tentacle of the hellish brain from which it sprang. And there's an eye-catching character role for Patrick Troughton. I've warned you. That's the best I can do. But in tone, the film is very different to much of the company's output, perhaps closest to the tragic Curse of the Werewolf, which we have also reviewed. <laughs> It's interesting how many people involved with the film seem to have felt that it could have been one of the company's best, though they don't always agree on why it wasn't. The script was certainly a point of contention, with writer John Gilling very unhappy with changes made, as was the makeup of the title character. Singled out for criticism by Christopher Lee, among others, it certainly doesn't hold up to Ray Harryhausen's Gorgon in Clash of the Titans, but it is at least used sparingly. For most of the film, the Gorgon is only a glimpsed presence, seen predominantly in reflection, which is really rather effective. When she attacks, then we only see her victims during... <coughs> ...and after. Although the speed with which this Gorgon turns people to stone does vary. For God's sake. Don't come here. With the Gorgon a shadow being cast rather than a monster to fight, the film is far more of a mystery. Seven unsolved murders in five years is hardly good for my prestige here in Vendorf. About people's motives as much as about who done it. I was about to tell you that Megera has taken on human form. With Peter Cushing forming one point of a love triangle that will no doubt play a role. Outside of those rare encounters with the Gorgon herself, the film does lack the horror set pieces you expect of Hammer, but what makes it interesting is that it also lacks the clear distinction between good and evil, familiar from Dracula or The Devil Rides Out. Is there really a bad guy here, or is it all shades of grey and degrees of victim? I've had enough. I am sick of your jealousy. Though the climax has a more familiar energy to it. This is generally a bleaker Hammer film than we are used to, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a harder thing to maintain. It's a solid film, a very well-made one with a great cast, and the leads have to some extent been cast engagingly against type. Why do you want Paul out of the way, Namaroff? But it's hard to love, and I'm tempted to agree with those who felt that it could have been more. Incidentally, on the subject of that makeup, one idea touted by the actress who was to have originally played the Gorgon was a headpiece comprised of live grass snakes. That would have been something to see. Thanks for watching. Are you a fan of the Gorgon? Where would you rank it in Hammer's back catalogue? Let us know in the comments below.